I get recorded and I start to burn. Excellent timing. Mean, um, so, does anybody have any questions about anything you've done so far? We have any? The anger is the What? I mean, on that study you have some of them, like, when you say the definition of the language, it's one of the two facts, five, and the answer. The definition of sensitivity, uh, is sensitivity of sale through chatting to detect what's in Generic, uh, generic definition of elasticity, sensitivity of sale through a change. Definition of price elasticity, sensitivity, sensitivity of sale through change in price. Definition of income elasticity would be sensitivity of sales through a change in income. Yeah, like sale. Cross price elasticity, sensitivity of sales through change in the price of the product. So, give me two products. Honey bun. Okay, and okay. Honey bun. Cinnamon roll. And cinnamon. I should not have spelled it as Pacific Daughters. What's his name? Cinnamon. Yeah. Roll. So. Yeah, we have horse egg, cinnamon, and castane peanut, and butter, and goat egg, chocolate, and Maggie. So, anyway, somebody kind of got off steam there. And the dog named Copper, so she was there first. Okay, so let's see. Last year, the Honey Bun Incorporated, trademark, copyright, all right, sir. Did I get recorded? I think so. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's see. Honey bun. Last year they sold eighty million. This year they sold ninety million. Meanwhile, on the other side of the tracks, the Cinnamon Roll Company Incorporated, they used to charge. Let's see. They used to charge a dollar a piece. And now this year, let's see. The cinnamon roll is is selling for a dollar and twenty. Too bad. I'm gonna see here not the jet be paying off for thirty seconds while you do the problem. I figured I'd do that because then you should be able to see that. Probably didn't come to him.
apologize. The math didn't work out quite as beautiful as it, I was hoping because I had a problem with uh, going along. So, um, so the sales of honey buns, right? Uh, they're um, now selling 90 million where they used to sell 80 million, so they're selling. 10 million more than usual. Compared to the 80 million they used to sell, their sales went up by 12.5%. That's what y'all got. Okay. Um, the sales of cinnamon buns. Sales, I mean, the price of cinnamon buns, they raised their price to a buck 20 where they used to only be a dollar, so the price went up by 20 cents. Compared to the dollar they used to be, their sales, I mean, their price went up 20%. Because honey buns are 20% more expensive, people are going to buy a bunch less honey buns. And what are they doing? Well, apparently, some people are buying, I mean, excuse me, cinnamon, cinnamon rolls. Okay, the price of cinnamon rolls went up. So people are buying less cinnamon rolls. And so a lot of those people, an interesting amount of them are buying honey buns instead. 0. 0.125 divided by 0. 0.2 gives you 0. 0.6. Elastic or inelastic? Yeah, it's inelastic. What is that telling you? Yeah, they're related to one another, but not that closely. Because even a fairly big change in the price of cinnamon rolls only led to a small change in honey bun sales. Now, are they substitutes or complements? They're substitutes. Why? Because this is a positive number. Because the when the competition raises their price. Cinnamon rolls go, gets more expensive. They're gonna end, the people can buy less cinnamon rolls, and instead they're gonna be buying more honey buns. Honey bun sales went up, so you got a positive number. Good. If they were compliments, you would have had a negative number because people would be like, "Well, I can't afford a cinnamon roll. What's the point of eating a cinnamon roll if I can't eat a honey bun along with it?" Take cinnamon, take two cinnamon buns, put a honey bun, cinnamon rolls, put a honey bun in the middle, have a hamburger, or a sandwich, All right? That would be compliments. But since this is a positive number, they're substitutes. How many of y'all got it? Okay. How many of y'all did the homework? Only about four of you, I think I saw. So the rest of you, you've got like a week to do the homework. Um, yeah, so it's positive. It's if it's, yeah. If it's a positive number, they're substitutes. If it's a negative number, they would be compliments. And as we ended class, whatever that day was, last Thursday, I tried to get a little bit bizarre on y'all, and y'all thought I was a bit nuts when I was there talking about whatever was it, Coke and spark plugs. Okay. I did not make y'all buy a textbook, right? So, save each of y'all $200. What have you done with money? Yeah, and what is it? Okay, specifically, what did you do with that money? Or what are you going to do with that money? What? Okay, uh, Sam bought another book for another class. What did you do? What did you do? Some of you are like, what would be your money? Yeah! Some of you are like, I'm going to pay my phone bill. Some of you are like, well, finally, I'm leveling this year. You'd be like, I'm going to be buying more di diapers for my eight tentacled alien love child thing. Think, think what all that, you know, what? say you're going to spend that money on. Yeah, no, no, you haven't thought about it, but there's, there's connections there. So there is a relationship between textbooks and gasoline, between textbooks and diapers, between textbooks and beer. Y'all don't drink beer anymore. Actually, alcohol sales are going down for like a couple, a couple of years in a row. I was hearing about that this morning. Just part of you. Know. I guess with social media and that kind of stuff, y'all aren't being a social, y'all aren't hanging out as much, y'all are at least not staying at home drinking by yourself. 
So y'all sitting home playing, watching Netflix, playing video games, not getting drunk and not getting pregnant. So good on you, I guess. So pregnancy rates are going, teen pregnancy rates are dropping dramatically. Anyway, I'll so, make something else. Yeah, I could do that too with today's. Yes. Whenever my financial aid check comes in, don't, don't raise your hand if you have financial aid. That check is going to come in. What are you going to do with that money? That's what I'm talking about, about the relationship between kids. Some of y'all are like, well, I'm going to put it. Some of you can put it toward a TV. Some of you can put it toward an Xbox. Some of you can put it toward, well, I'm putting this four letter away for gasoline. All right. What are y'all doing? Truck insurance. Truck insurance, car insurance, new tires. A new vehicle. Or a new vehicle. Or kids. Going back to the new tires, we can do gravel on a fire driveway, and when you get loose gravel in it, it hasn't come in. It was road grader to pack it down yet, so I got two. I had two flat tires yesterday. My wife had two two different times last week. Thank you. Anyway, where's the That's a set of tires from a couple weeks. Huh? Yes, that's. Unfortunately, I had that last time we put gravel on the driveway, I managed to get three holes in a row, and they're like, we ain't got a patch, we'll do it, you gotta get a new tire. <laughs> they were too close together, they, you couldn't have multiple patches, but they were too far apart, that one patch wouldn't do it all. But granted, the tires are kind of racing slips anyway, so I had to replace them anyway. So, so oh. I think we talked about this, but just sort of put if you end up with a positive number there, the products are going to be complementary. I mean, excuse me, if it's a negative number, the products are going to be complementary because the price of peanut butter gets more expensive. I'm going to buy less peanut butter. Well, I'm going to buy less jelly too because they're complements for one another. So if the price of peanut butter goes up, the sales for jelly would go down. If it's a positive sign, like the example we just had there, the example with Coke and Pepsi we did last. Thursday, there could be substitutes. Because not many people say, well, Coke is going to get more expensive. I can buy less Coke and I'm going to buy less Pepsi too. We usually substitute one or the other. Budweiser gets more expensive. You get Miller, you know who you are. Not very often you know two fists and two different kinds of people. Anyway, I have a story. But y'all don't drink anymore, right? So, go with me on this. And I think that's where we finished last time. But the math for all those problems are exactly the same, like I told y'all last week. Just sit down, turn off your brain, go on autopilot, do the math. Start with the sales numbers, compute a percentage change, then compute a percentage change of whatever that other thing is, secondly, and then you divide, making sure that that sales number is the one on top, get that number, and then is it elastic or not. Then you turn on your brain. To answer B is a substitute, is a complement, is it a normal, is it inferior, depending on what what you're saying, come last is your cross rise last is it? So don't think, just do. Right. That's why you need to do the homework problems so you get to the point where you don't think you just do. Think of this boot camp. Because that's what you're trying to do in boot camp. Don't think, just do. And you know what to do. All right. So give me other proof. Okay. Um I sort of talked about this at the end of class Thursday as well, without actually pulling up the slide. Is ultimately in the grand scheme, I think I did. In the grand scheme of things, everything ends up being a substitute for one another anyway. They may be more of a complement than they are a substitute, but there still is a substitutability in the fact that they're competing against the limited amount of money that we have in our wallet. Coke may be cheaper. Oh no, the peanut butter may be cheaper. Jelly might be cheaper. You want to buy more peanut butter, you might want to buy more jelly, but then you look in your wallet and you only have enough to buy one, right? So in the grand scheme of things, even though mostly they are a complement, but sometimes it's a substitute, I can only buy one. Um, but 
because we have opportunity costs. If you only have a buck and you go down to that machine, yep, the peanut M&Ms are a substitute for regular M&Ms. But in fact, you bought the peanut M&Ms means you gave up the opportunity to buy the regular M&Ms because you don't have that much money. All right. So, we talked about opportunity costs first with the class, right? So, why did we just spend time in this chapter? Well, because elasticity stuff can help us as a business. To know, as I suggested, to know how, if we change our price, if we raise our price, how many of our customers are, gonna we, are we going to scare away? A few or a bunch? If we're only, scared, only gonna scare away a few, well, we can raise our prices and make more profit and be a more stable company. So we'll have, our company will have a future, our employees will have a future, and we don't have to worry about going, getting run out of business. But if you find out that, well, if we raise our prices a little bit, we're going to scare away all of our customers and kill our business, what do we need to do? Keep the price the same or figure out ways that we can lower our price, right? So we can sell more. So that's good to know. It, I think it's like if you're running the, the, the sack machine down the end of the hallway, it's kind of good to know what that sensitivity is. It sort of gives you an idea of what. I, every time, you know, I got to refill this machine three times a week, and that's a whole lot of work because it's, it's colleges and campuses out in the middle of nowhere. So maybe if I raise the price a little bit, it'll slow these suckers, the students, <laughs> slow these students down a little bit. So maybe I only have to come two two times a week, and I'll make about the same amount of money, and I don't have to do as much work. Right? There's value in having this kind of information. Um, it's also to know okay, if incomes are going down, how's that going to hurt us? If incomes are going up, how's that going to help us? In, but for college, bizarrely enough, which all two or three of you took econ 204 and took five, keep up, took econ 201. Uh, the, uh, the when we're in a recession, when unemployment's going up, people are out of work, and if you're out of work, what are you not getting? They just. So the economy is going down, the incomes are going down. Those are usually the times when enrollment here at the college goes up. We have kind of a negative income elasticity here because we have people that the economy is going good and you've got a good paying job. Are you going to be knocking off time on your good paying job to come back to school? You have a lot of people like, well, I don't have, I don't have a job. I can't find a job, and well, and I don't have anything keeping me from getting an education. I might as well get an education. So. When the economy does get healthy in a couple of years, I'll be better able to get an even better job. Next time I'm get my student aid. Providing you can pay for it, 80% of our students are on financial aid. Here we go. 80% of the country in college is on financial aid. Yeah. Sometimes it seems like but just, a lot of that aid ends up being loans, and be careful with student loans. Just, it's a good thing. But you got to stay on top of it for paying the back. Trust me, stay on top of it. But so we kind of need to know the economy is improving. Great, it's wonderful for everybody out there. But the economy is improving, then that means well, we probably need to figure our role that's going to be down a little bit next semester. So we kind of need to know okay, if our role is going to be down a little bit next semester, is this the right time to go ahead and hire a bunch more people? Maybe not. But you said so like the college, but we're kind of in a weird way, but but if the economy is improving, incomes are improving, well if we're making spam or some kind of inferior product, we know the customers are gonna be slowly getting away from eating our stuff. When the economy is going bad, when the economy is getting worse, people slow down shopping in Target for their value price, mid price, good good high quality stuff, and shopping where? Dollar Tree, Family Dollar, Dollar General. Those companies did very well during the recession that we had from 2008, really all the way through like 2012, 2013, those companies were doing very well. Where a lot of the department stores and that kind of stuff took a beating. Sears took a beating. You know, a lot of companies that took, it, took a beating, but this is kind of information to know. Okay, incomes are improving, so our sales are going to go up. Store, we're a car dealership. Incomes are going up. People can buy more cars. Well, we need to increase our inventory. Make salespeople happy. We talked about that last week. Was it this class or no? It must have been one of the other ones. Um, 
inventory. Okay, that was I remember the question. Okay, uh, but if incomes are improving, okay, we, we, if incomes in, in the economy is improving here nationally, well, then Ford's like, we need to make more cars because we'll be able to sell more of them. Uh, GM says we need to make more cars because we can sell more of them. But if the economy is improving, people are like not buying your car if they either A, have lost your job, or B, think they're about to lose your job, right? So if the economy is slowing down, we need to know, okay, that's going to impact people's incomes, that's going to screw up our sales, so we need to adjust production accordingly. So this is valuable, very valuable info for a company to have. Also, it lets us know, do we need to pay attention to other products? If you're Coke, do you need to pay attention to what Pepsi's doing? Yes, because they are substitutes. They are very, very strong substitutes. You're going to have a pretty decently high elastic demand, cross price elasticity, Coke and Pepsi. Because a lot of people are like, well, they're basically the same. I go in a restaurant and I ask for Pepsi and they say Coke and I say, okay. So a lot of people, they're two the same thing. But like Miller Lite, for a lot of people, is the same thing. So if I'm trying to sell Miller Lite and Bud Light lowers your price, well, everybody's going to be drinking Bud Light. Ain't nobody going to be drinking my Miller Lite. So what do I got to do? I have to adjust. But, okay, I know if I'm Coke, I need to pay attention to Pepsi. Very, very, very much. If I'm Pepsi, I really got to pay attention to Coke. If I'm Pepsi, do I have to pay attention to Minimate Orange Juice? Uh, to a degree. Maybe a little bit, but not a whole lot. If I am Coke, do I need to pay attention to the price of spark plugs? Also to a degree. Not really, but yeah, but we as we saw last week, there is a relationship there, but it's so itty bitty 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 it doesn't really matter. Yeah, we'll sell two less bottles because the price of spark plugs went up, but only two of them throughout the whole country. I'm not losing sleep over. So what products do we need to pay attention to? Is there any kind of relationship there? Um, and for us as consumers, you know, we, you know, it's a little bit nice for us to be thinking about how that's going to impact us about what's going to happen if I've got any elastic good and the price goes up, or if it's any elastic good and the price goes up. Is it elastic good and the price goes up? Well, I got other options. If Coke goes up, I can drink more Pepsi. Coke goes up, I can drink Dr. Pepper, I can drink Mountain Dew, I can drink Sundrop, I can drink Sunkiss Orange. If grandma's heart medication goes up, that's getting elastic, she can do what? Pay or die, right? So, kind of been interesting to do. Okay, um, y'all with me on that? Okay, do not write this. But just for the fun of it, this is the first time I've gone here teaching this class in, in the classroom. It technically is a price elasticity of supply. But I ain't going to test you on it, but I just want you to know just for absolute fun of it. The idea of how much, instead of my sales, how much am I going to be interested in changing my production when price goes up? Especially if you're like a farmer and your sales are like everything. I'm going to grow my corn and I'm going to be delivering it to Kellogg's. I'm going to be growing my story beans. I'm going to be delivering it to Tyson or whoever you're selling to. Like y'all did, y'all scorned at Tyson, didn't you? Yeah. Um, so, how much am I going to change my oops, How much am I going to change my production based on the change in price? Price goes up a little bit. Is it really worth it for me to crank up more production? But if price goes up a lot, maybe it is. How much higher does the price of soybeans need to go before a farmer says, well, I'm going to go buy more land. I'm going to buy a new tractor so I can do more, faster, better, smarter. So technically, the producers are thinking about that as well. It's nice when you're Coke or Pepsi. You just have to deal with that demand elasticity because you are the person making the product that the end customer is selling. But for agriculture, you're not. Because when have you ever bought a bag of wheat? You know, when have you ever bought a cow? You haven't. You bought steak that somebody has chopped up from the cow and then all that stuff. You get people in the middle that they do the processing, turning it from the farm product to the product that you are actually, as a consumer, going to use. And so they're the people that you do it. And, you know, Kellogg's, you're buying corn from thousands of corn farmers, mixing it together to make the corn flakes that they sell to you and I. But we just think about corn flakes. We don't know what's in it. Hopefully, you're reading number one corner, but I'm 
that you have very good corn syrup, not good as corn. Um, but for the individual producer that's a small producer in the overall production thing, then they just got to think about I don't have much control over the sales or anything, but how's the price going to influence my decision on how much I need to produce? So even if you are not selling directly to the end customer, even if you're selling at an auction, well, I know cattle prices are better this year than last year, but still, the price I'm going to get for my cows is based on however many people show up the day that I take them to the auction house and sell them. But if overall they seem to be doing better this year than last year, well, then maybe I'll it's worth it to raise more cow. So, oh, well, just, so when prices are down, we're less able, less willing to produce product. When prices go up, we're more able and more willing to go with me on that. Of course you are. Oops. <laughs> <laughs>